The climax of the core proposes a brutally simple solution, restart the core's rotation with a series of perfectly timed nuclear explosions. The idea is that the staggered detonation of five 200 megaton bombs would create an expansive shock wave that would impart the angular momentum necessary for the core to resume spinning. This is where the science of the film completely breaks down. It's the equivalent of trying to spin atop the size of the moon by simply blowing on it. The energy required to affect the rotation of an object with the mass of Earth's core is astronomical, orders of magnitude greater than humanity's entire nuclear arsenal. In reality, the bomb's energy would be absorbed like a drop of water in a foundry, without generating the necessary directional thrust. Furthermore, the core is not a simple engine that can be ignited, its rotation is the result of complex convection currents in the liquid metal, a chaotic, self-sustaining system called a geodynamo. The film even implausibly extends the catastrophe to the animal kingdom, suggesting that whales, with their biological sonar, are the first to hear the planet's suffering, a mystical connection that lacks scientific basis but adds a poetic touch to the disaster. To coordinate the detonations and, later, to save the world, the plot enlists a hacker capable of manipulating vibrations through the Earth's crust to slow the planet's rotation, a concept that treats geology as if it were a computer network. The film concludes with an ingenious but physically impossible twist, running out of power, the heroes use the ship's reactor as the final bomb and somehow manage to have the whale's ultrasound waves guide them to the surface as they surf the shock wave. A journey that, in reality, would have incinerated and crushed them in an instant. In short, the core is spectacular entertainment that uses real scientific concepts as a springboard into a purely fictional abyss, making us appreciate the incredible and delicate machinery at work beneath our feet.